cell the unit of life what is the definition for cell cell is defined as basic structural and functional unit of life except viruses it means viruses are not considered as cell they are on the threshold of the life which means that they are neither living nor dead so whenever it comes to definition for cell remember it is a basic structural function unit of life it is even considered as building blocks of our body like when you look at this building the building is made up of bricks so the brick becomes the unit of building in that same way for human body the unit of the body is nothing but the cell whether it is human body or plant body the unit is cell and cell is the unit of all living organisms on this earth so let's understand one important word how this cell word came into picture cell word has came from a latin word which means cellule now this word cellule it means small compartments or even i can say that this is nothing but empty rooms who came up with the cell so remember the cell was discovered by robert hooke in 1665 robert hooke was the first scientist ever to talk about cell so therefore he is also known as the father of cell biology or cytology but the problem is robert hooke discovered dead cell he performed one experiment where he took a cork and he took the thin sections of the cork and when he observed that cork what he saw he saw a small small empty chambers cork is nothing but it is the covering that we normally see on the bottle so this cork was sliced a thin section was taken and when robert hooke observed under the microscope he saw hexagonal chambers it appeared like honeycomb structure and this honeycomb structure appeared to be empty compartment or empty rooms and that's why robert hooke came up with the word that is called as cellule and finally he gave the word cell cell basically means what empty compartment but in greek it means honeycomb like structure that is cellule from the word cellule came the word cell so this is what we need to understand now the problem was robert hooke observed the cork which was actually a dead cell as a result he observed empty compartments later on it was proved that the cell is not empty what robert hooke observed was nothing but the cell wall he mentioned everything about his experiment in a book in the name of micrographia so in this book he talked that the cells are nothing but empty compartments which has lots of space in it but later on it was proved that the cells are not empty in 1673 anton van leeuwenhoek one of the dutch businessmen he was the businessman who used to sell microscopes so he was basically you can say he invented his own microscope he created his own microscope and he was doing business of that and under that microscope he started observing the different different parts that he come across he observed living cell he took dirty water he observed the amoebas into that water he even saw the scraping of the gums sperm lots of thing and then he, he told cells are not empty cells they are filled up by some kind of liquid that liquid was not explained by anton von leeuwenhoek but he made one thing very much clear that the cells are not empty they are filled up by some components he observed human sperms bacteria rbcs scraping of gums etc everything was observed and finally it was proven that cells are not empty so whenever it comes to who discovered cell you will always say robert hooke discovered cell but when it comes to who discovered living cell you have to always mention anton von leeuwenhoek let's understand the definition for cell biology it is defined as the biology of science which deals with the study of structure of cell function of cell molecular organization of the cell and even the growth of the cell the genetics of the cell the how the cells reproduce the reproduction of the cell when you study all these things it is included under cell biology so we can say cell biology is nothing but the branch of science which deals with the study of structure function molecular organization growth reproduction or genetics cell biology is also known as cytology so in simple words you can say cyto means cell 
and logy means study. So what is cytology? It is nothing but study of cell. We need to understand one very important concept that is called a cell theory. Who came up with the cell theory? So in 1838, M.J. Sclidane, one of the scientists, he studied plants. He was a botanist by his education. And he observed all the plants around him. And he came up with one single statement that all plants are made up of cells. In 1839, there was one more scientist in the name of T.S. Sean. T.S. Sean observed all the animals. Basically, he was a zoologist. So he observed all the animals. And he told one thing, that all the animals are made up of cells. And based on these two sentences, instead of mentioning separate that all plants are made up of cell or all animals are made up of cell, let's put it in this way, that all living organisms are made up of cell. So this was the first statement ever made for the cell theory. Now later on, there was a question raised, how new cells come into picture? Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. Anything on this earth is having life, it means it is made up of cell. The point here is how new cells came into picture. Whenever we talk about M.J. Sclidane and T.S. Sean, we all know that Sclidane was a botanist, but he was a German botanist, and Sean was a British zoologist. So we got two statements in cell theory. First statement was all living organisms are made up of cell. The second statement was cell is the basic structure and function unit of life. But the point is how new cells were formed. So now in 1858, there was a scientist in the name of Rudolf Virchow. Now this Rudolf Virchow, he observed and he told, he modified the cell theory. He said that new cells arise from pre-existing cell. But in his language, in Latin language, he told omnicellulae e cellulae. Omnicellulae e cellulae means new cells will always arise from pre-existing cells. Like we came from our father and mother. They came from their father and mother. So when there is a new life, it has to come from pre-existing life. New cells arise from pre-existing cell was given by Rudolf Virchow in the name of omnicellulae e cellulae. So modern cell theory was formulated, keeping all the statements in mind. And in modern cell theory, what were the different sentences, statements included? Very first statement of cell theory, all living organisms are made up of cells, no matter whether plant, animal, or bacteria, and the products of the cell. The second statement of modern cell theory was all cells arise from pre-existing cell. That was given by Rudolf Virchow, omnicellulae, e cellulae. Membrane-bound cell organelles like mitochondria, Golgi body, chloroplast, all these membrane-bound cell organelles of the protoplast, they do not survive along or outside the protoplast. It means they have to be in the protoplasm to be functional. This is third statement of the modern cell theory. So modern cell theory basically focused on these important concepts. Another sentence was that all cells have similar fundamental structure. Like for example, all the cells will have cell membrane. All the cells will have mitochondria, Golgi body. All the cells will show same metabolic reaction. Genetic information is stored basically as DNA in the chromosome. So this is all included under modern cell theory. All living organisms are made up of cells. New cells arise from the existing cell. These are the two important statements of cell theory. Cell theory, basically, it was also called as cell doctrine. Let's understand the definition of the cell theory or cell doctrine. It says the simple, basic, and formal biological generalization. It means we are talking about basic structure of cell is cell theory or cell doctrine. So simple, basic, and formal biological generalization is called as cell theory or even cell doctrine. What we need to understand one very important word that is called as totipotency. When I use this word toti, toti means total. 
potency means potential so total potential or the ability of the cell to give rise to a complete organism on getting proper nutrient medium it is that cell is called as totipotent cell and this phenomena is called as totipotency it means the cell which has the capability or the ability to give rise to complete organism is totipotent cell in humans the totipotent cells are the stem cells the bone marrow cells so the ability of the cell to differentiate and grow into new organisms is called as a totipotency so totipotent cells are those which gives rise continuously to new new organisms example the stem cells through stem cells you can give rise to complete organism let's talk about the next important concept and it talks about exception to the cell theory this is very important when i talk about exception to cell theory it simply means one thing viruses were not given any place in the cell theory concept why because viruses do not divide they do not grow they do not eat food and they are on the threshold of the life it means neither living nor dead that's why they are not included under cell theory bga that is nothing but blue green algae also known as cyanobacteria prokaryote it does not possess true cellular structure it means no cell organel not well developed nucleus nothing is present fungus like mucor rhizopus these are tubular and multinucleated what we studied in cell theory that each cell will have one nucleus but this is the exception algae like waucheria which is tubular and it is also multinucleated so these are the exceptions to the cell theory when we go with respect to the next important part that is the largest cell that we know is the ostrich egg is the largest cell largest cell in human basically is the human egg the ovum or it is also known as oocyte the longest cell is the nerve cell or the nerve fiber neuron the smallest cell that exists in the nature is the mycoplasma to be very much specific it is mycoplasma galliceptacum which is 0.3 micrometer in size whenever we talk about bacteria now remember bacteria they are of different types they are 3 to 5 micrometer in terms of size multicellular when we talk about so rbc red blood corpuscles 7 micrometer in diameter they are, do not have nucleus so you can say it is non nucleated structure but mature rbcs will not have nucleus but young ones they have nucleus present in them let's understand the different shapes of the cells based on the position based on the characteristics where it is found when i talk about spherical shape bacteria it is cocci coccus so this is one of the shape so whenever it comes to spherical shape remember cocci rod shape bacteria is a bacillus which is also known as bacilli so rod shape bacteria there is a comma shape and even spiral shape bacteria also spiral shape bacteria is known as spirilla which is spiral in nature and we have the comma shape bacteria so the comma shape bacteria is called as vibrio so these are the different shapes of the bacteria that we normally see spherical rod spiral and comma shape bacteria the bacteria may be flagellated if they are flagellated it helps in locomotion or they even can be non flagellated rbcs basically they are biconcave disk like structure so whenever we look at the structure it is round and biconcave disk like when we talk about wbcs they are irregular shape amoeba shaped structure of the wbcs but rbcs do not have nucleus and the wbcs have nucleus let's look at the epithelium tissue the epithelium tissue the cells are of different size and even the nucleus is of different shape so some time we see columnar epithelium tissue the pillar like cuboidal epithelium tissue cube shaped squamous epithelium tissue flat tiles like cells how the columnar cells look like they look like tall pillar like cells their nucleus is oval 
cuboidal epithelium they are cube shaped cells squamous epithelium they do not have any shape as such they are polygonal in shape and they have flat surface so these are the different shapes of the cells along with the nucleus when we talk about plants let's take the example of tracheids tracheids the cells are long they are elongated so in case of plants remember tracheids they have elongated cells when we take the example of mesophyll cells mesophyll cells are not at all elongated they are round or even you can say they are oval in shape so then the mesophyll cells they contain chloroplast which helps in photosynthesis so this what you can see is the shape of different different types of cells so the cells they do not have a uniform shape or uniform size but at the end of the day the function metabolically almost remains the same whenever we talk about microscope remember microscope the device that is used to see microorganisms that's why it is micro micro means small scope means vision first ever scientist to create his own microscope or invent microscope was zacharias jensen and most of the time we are confused with galileo remember galileo invented telescope not microscope in 1931 german max nol and ernest ruska these are the two important scientists who invented electron microscope in biology the main discovery the main advancement took place after 1930 because of the invention of the electron microscope and this electron microscope gave a great boom to the field of biology the resolving power resolving power means the distance that we can see between two particles so the resolving power of electron microscope is 10 armstrong and we know that one armstrong is 10 raised to minus 10 meter so this becomes a resolving power electron microscope it requires electron light microscope will make use of light there are simple microscope as well as compound microscope study of living cells cannot be done without using microscope and most important it cannot be done under electron microscope why because of high voltage So if I take any living tissue and I try to study under electron microscope, I cannot do that. All the cells will be dead because of high electron beam, because of high voltage of the electron. Let's take a look at this. This is the nucleus. The scientist who first observed nucleus was Robert Brown. He told that inside the cell there is some dot-like structure, and this dot is common in all the cells, no matter whether plant cell or the animal cell. and he call it as nucleus nucleus means the center let's understand this when we talk about robert brown in 1831 he came up with the term nucleus cytoplasm and protoplasm let's understand these two different words because most of the time there is a confusion what is cytoplasm and protoplasm so let's take this as cell this orange part i take it as the cytoplasm so the fluid that is present between the nucleus and the cell membrane is the cytoplasm and the fluid which is present in the nucleus it is called as nucleoplasm if i take both together the nucleoplasm and the cytoplasm together it is called as protoplasm so protoplasm is nothing but it's a fluid of the nucleus as well as the fluid of the cytoplasm in 1839 johans e perkinje he was the first scientist ever to coin the term protoplasm but he talked about animal cells so who coined the term protoplasm for animal cells johan c perkinje in 1846 von mohl coined the term protoplasm for plant cell so remember protoplasm was coined by johan c perkinje walder in 1888 he coined the term that is called as chromosome chromosome term was coined by walder 